Oh. Uh, Anybody up? I'm bored. Oop. Oh, no, it didn't take it away. Okay, cool. Oh, you need a notification. Okay. What time is it? 11.34 at night. You know, it's kind of late to be going live, but I know some of you was out there on that road, though, out there driving. I was going to drive tonight, but um, I didn't feel like taking that Amazon rate. It was trash. Well, no, it wasn't trash, but. It wasn't as good as I've gotten, so I decided not to take it. Amazon is down, down, down. Dollar sixty eight, yeah, right. Should have went live earlier. How you doing, man? Justin, how you doing? Oh, it pops up over there. That's cool. Hey, man, you want to chat? You can click that link. You can uh, hop in the video with me if you want. That way you got to do all that typing. Um, the main reason I haven't went over the road is because got a fly around here. Um, it's just uncomfortable in that truck. That truck is the F seven fifty is 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 not the best long distances, like four or five hour stretches. Okay, it's comfortable. After that, it doesn't have air ride, so it it really starts to beat you up. Um. If you're going to go be on the road for like six, seven hours, rest a little bit and hit the road again, you know, take your little break and hit the road again, it, it, it starts to beat you up. Like even our highways around here, there's one highway that I got to drive across all the time. And when I hit that thing, man, that the whole front of the truck just bounces. Okay. I just signed up to um, C.H. Robinson. I got to finish the uh, tomorrow. I got to send them my insurance paperwork. And uh, hopefully I can do some regional stuff with them. I don't mind going over a state or two with this truck. But like I said, long distance is it's just not comfortable. 
if I had like an international or Hino, I'd probably be more inclined to do it um, because those those trucks have air ride seats. My truck basically just has a F three fifty pickup seat in it, so not that comfortable when you're talking that weight, the weight of the truck, the front end, the way it bounces. Um, it's on leaf springs. It, it, it's it's a rough ride. It's a rough ride short distances, but bearable, 100% bearable. It's not that bad, but once you start driving super long distances, it's like, man. If anybody ain't doing nothing, uh, that first comment, click click that link. You can hop in here with me. And uh, I just thought of three topics to talk about. We can talk about the box truck business, current events, or your 2022 plans. Twenty twenty two is right around the corner. About to get this year up out of here. It's been a it's been an interesting year. Um, not the greatest, but far from the worst. Um, got to keep planning though. Got to keep planning for the next, next phase of, you know, what we're trying to do out here. I've, I've made some interesting moves this year that I didn't plan to make. I didn't even earlier this year, I didn't even plan to be in the box truck game. It came about and I was able to jump on it. So I did. Um, but who knows where I'll be six months from now. That's, that's the way I move. Um, I'm not really in love with one particular business. I like business as a whole, really. I like business, just whatever I can do to work for myself. I love it. Come on, somebody click that link, man. Let's talk. <laughs> Don't be afraid. It's just you and me. Or uh, up to four others. We can have a little powwow. see here hmm. I just uh, set up this what is this melon app to go live so I can put all this stuff on the screen and kind of organize everything better and give me the ability to actually allow people to uh, join in and uh, chat with me chat live Cause this one thing like talking to my camera and I'm still sitting here by myself quietly and I can see the text and everything, but it's another thing to have people uh, join in where you can actually talk to them and hear their voice. And it makes for a better conversation. Well, finally stop raining outside. See mothership keeps saying something about dispatch you're not dispatching anything at night let's see here yeah i've got no dispatches what are you talking about they just want you to keep the app open so they know what you're doing all the time got google uh facebook mothership and amazon tracking me at all times Okay, so one thing I don't see on here is how many people would actually be watching. Hmm. Whoops, I can't do that. Hmm. 
I need to start going live more. I guess this is just a test of how this system actually works too, but I'm still going to have to have a YouTube tab open so I can get some information from there because this app is not giving me all the information, but it's better than just going off YouTube by itself because YouTube doesn't allow me to talk to people or bring people in. I have a feeling YouTube is going to implement this type of, uh, system sooner or later because it's foolish of them not to allow us to bring people in and chat with them live because these these websites are doing it web-based and very cool thing to have Who wants to talk? Who wants to talk? Who wants to chitty chat? Anybody on the road? I, I, well, if you're on the road, I hope you're not worried about trying to get on the phone. <laughs> Dangerous. Well, I mean, if, if anything, if I got a, nobody, I mean, I know it's late. Um, and I kind of just did this out of the blue because I'm not at a thousand subscribers yet. I can't do a, a community post to let people know that I'm about to go live. So, you know, I guess my three questions at the bottom, I guess I'll, uh, talk about it myself. We'll go, go in order. So the box truck business. Hmm. Um, funny. Um, Justin, I, depending on the mileage, I say 35 to 40 in, in right now's market, you might be able to get a little bit more. Um, if it's in decent shape, I say, 35 that's because when i get into the position to sell mine I, i'll probably try and sell it for 35 myself 40 if i can get it into a market where they're desperate a little bit more desperate like let's say california or what other market was uh really high i think florida's high too and then you know that's a big truck, so somebody's got to get it over there. So I'd be like, you know, you buy it for, let's say, 38. I'll drive it over there to you, you know, catch a plane back. So, Justin, are you trying to step up or step out? Me personally, I want to step up. Um. I think, okay, my first question, well, the first, number one, box truck business. I don't think the box truck business is going anywhere. And technically, it can't. It can't go nowhere because you can't put tractor trailers everywhere. Um, so there will, right on, me too, man, I hear you. So there will always be, um, you, you, you can't not go without the box truck. Um, but... The, the the market is so saturated right now. We've kind of ran it up like Bitcoin <laughs> to, to so many people got trucks, especially the non CDL trucks. So many people got them that it's really saturated the market. And like you look at Amazon's rates, you see how cheap they're getting because they got options. Not only do they have options, but they've they've been implementing things that they wanted to do for a couple of years now, which is have a, a fleet of their own box trucks so they can do their own stuff. And that way they can hire somebody and pay him 18, 19 bucks an hour. And, you know, 
do the same thing that we're doing basically now they'll never be able to even amazon they'll never be able to eliminate it because that means you'll have a, a complete workforce which americans are too lazy let's just be honest <laughs> not everybody's going to want to do that um so the box truck business itself it's it's good and bad at the same time right now and if you're willing to go over the road with it which i am to a degree um if you're willing to go over the road with it then you know it could, it could be something very lucrative as you see a, a lot of people on youtube do they they make a killing but i'm not willing to go that hard with it i if i'm going to go that hard it's got to be in a semi i mean there's there's just the money that they're making you can double that in a semi there's there's just no way i'm i'm going to hit the road that hard and be in a box truck especially mine not like i said if i had a hino or international things would probably be different i probably i probably would make that exception everybody that has a hino I don't hear them complaining about the rough ride, but the F-750, like after five hours, like I just want to get out of this truck. <laughs> Have you, uh, you got your CDL, Justin? I failed the first time I went to go take the test. I got to go take it again. Um, and when I go take it again, I plan to crush it. I ain't playing around next time. I went out, well, I went in there and decided to lollygag with my studying and uh, ended up kind of being lazy with it and failed miserably. I got a lot right for just remembering Yeah, I failed the written test. If, if I, I wish I had my learners already. I probably would have passed the, passed the driving test. I, I know how to drive like crazy. So the written test, everything, and I skimmed over the book for probably like two days, and everything that I studied, they didn't ask none of those questions. I, I studied all the technical stuff on the test, and they asked all the philosophical um, what would you do questions, not the bare bones this is the distance, this is the speed, this is the braking. They didn't they didn't ask none of that. <laughs> yeah, I heard about that CDL app. I'm a, um let me look at look up that right now. And I, I need to take a bunch of uh, practice tests. A CDO prep test. Yep, CDO prep. I'm gonna install that right now. Uh, as long as I get my CDO before the end of the year and, you know, the rules change, I think it's March of 2022. Uh, okay. Okay. I think it's March of 2022. You got to officially have class time. But if you got your learners before then, then you don't have to do those extra steps because it's kind of like they're feeding us to these schools now uh, by changing the regulation, which is a... Um, I wouldn't even call it a gift. It's it's a byproduct of very bad drivers in the industry. Um, but that's not a product of the knowledge of what to do in a CDL. That's a product of every type of driver you could think of in a car. You got the same type in a truck. People who speed, people who follow too close, people who brake at the last minute. You know what I'm saying? Even though as a CDL driver, you're not supposed to be doing all of that, but you know, it's neither here nor there, I guess. So it kind of messes up, makes lawmakers make rules for new people, but you still got those same types of people. So trucks need to get smarter. That's that's part of the thing. Trucks are smart, but they need to get smarter, like Tesla smart or, you know, new BMW type smart. They need to radar the road look at advanced road conditions and be able to start applying brakes before uh, the driver notices, stuff like that. Because you think, how could... I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to happen this year. Watch. I mark my words. It's going to happen this winter. Somewhere in Minnesota, they're going to have... Or Colorado or North Dakota, they're going to have a whiteout and 
There's going to be a 50 car pileup. And I hate to say it, but it happens every year. And then you ask the question, how does a, a truck, cars, that many vehicles end up piling up because they weren't paying attention and they're going faster than what they should be going for the conditions. Now, truck drivers should know this. You would think they would know this, but like I said, every type of person you have in a car, you have in a truck. So you got your speeders, your late breakers, your, I don't care if it's raining, I'm not going to slow down. And then they're at work too. So it's like whatever the boss is telling them, which you, I've seen it all the time, forget your logs. Don't worry about your logs. We'll, we'll make that go away. Your weight, don't worry about your weight. We'll make that go away and get there as fast as you can. Forget the law. And that, that's what creates these accidents. And then the lawmakers look at that and then they want to create new laws that are going to kick our butts and make us uh, have to jump through more hoops to get CDLs and things. So, but it is what it is on that. As long as you get your learners before um, that deadline hits, which I want to say is either the end of February or March, then uh, anybody who wants to get their CDL should be good. But when it comes to the driving part, man, you just got to be smart, learn how to drive correctly, you know, take the information that's in the book and actually apply it and use it. That's what you, what you really got to do. I should have came on here earlier. I probably would have had some people that was ready, who would be ready to hop in and do some chit chatting. Anybody can click that link up above that first First link in the chat. Can I highlight that? Let me highlight that. There. I pinned the message in the chat. If anybody wants to hop in and uh, on their phone or computer, you can hop in and we can we can chat. Come on in. Anybody that wants to come on in, come on in. Don't be afraid. <laughs> Actually, you don't even got to show your face on camera. You can just have the audio if you want. You don't have to uh, show your face. You can just... Uh, Bring up the audio. I got to start going live again. I want to make going live a, a regular thing. So I got to start going live again. Let me change my color. Ooh, blue. Okay. Mother should leave my phone alone. The people that's uh, doing mothership right now, they're snatching up the load so quick. As soon as I see them, I can't even I can't even see where they're going. Zoom in to see where they're going before they're gone already. Sooner or later, they're going to start taking advantage of that and lowering their prices. Amazon rates are low everywhere. Just uh, pure trash. Pure trash. Hmm. Current events. Current events. What current event would I like to talk about? Let me think here. Hmm. I don't want to talk about no vaccine stuff. <laughs> uh, politics is a bust. I'm not talking about that. Um, shoot, crypto. I like crypto. People need to get crypto. One thing I've learned about, um, 
crypto and the, the thought process of it is people, because they have a lack of knowledge, they are um, hesitant or afraid or ignorant to it. Um, what I would say is, man, if, if you got a little bit of cash laying around, and I'm talking a little bit, a couple hundred bucks. These are one of those things you need not to be afraid of. You need to jump into it, get some, get some knowledge and uh, get into it. Find a financial advisor, you know, and ask them about it. Because a lot of these large companies, including Google, Apple, Fortune 500 companies, hedge funds, they are buying crypto. And they're going to corner the market on the ones that are limited. Because some of them aren't limited. But they're going to corner the market on the ones that are limited and make it just like the dollar. They're going to hoard crypto just like they hoard dollars. Which basically leaves us in the same state fighting to try and get up to the top. So it's like when it comes to to the crypto. That's a current event. I, I wake up every morning and I read about to see what's going on in the world, see who's adopting what coin or what market is messing with it. Because number one, that's where the world's going. Number two, um, you see rich people doing it. Do it. Follow what rich people do. Other than their bad habits, you know, their good habits on how they got rich or stay rich. Follow those habits. Just like if you see kind of like that uh, blockbuster thing, when you see rich folks dive into something, even when it looks bad, they dive into it, follow behind, you know. Because eventually, um, crypto is going to change. And the way the U.S. government is trying to make it like the way they're trying to devalue the dollar. You know, and create their own crypto coin. Oh, I like that light. That light is blue. <laughs> See what purple does. Hold up. Yellow, red. Let's go green. Look barely green. <clears throat> One of the things people really got to um, do is plan, plan for their future. Um, aside from crypto, we'll talk, let's talk about 2022 plans. Um, I usually have a five-year plan. Um, when you read about how to financially better yourself, one of the things you should do is have a financial plan. I tell this to my kids all the time, like, where do you want to be in five years, right? You should really think about sitting down and writing out a five year plan because that kind of like almost mentally, it kind of like solidifies your path. Now, in plans or when you're doing something, sometimes you're you're climbing the ladder and you might fall down a step. You know what to say? Two steps forward, one step back or one step forward, two steps back. However, you're how, how, however hard it's going to be for you that week or month. But um, as long as you get to the top or get to your end goal, you know, step backs don't really mean nothing. People take that hard. They take it really hard. But um, you can't sometimes. Sometimes you just got to uh, roll with the punches, as they say. So I'm currently in a five-year plan that ends in 2025. And... As long as everything is set by 2025, <clears throat> whatever I got to do to get to said goal, you know, it's whatever. That's why, like, crypto, the box truck, my lunch trailer, YouTube, whatever I got to do. Um, and that's the thing about success, too. It, it's, it's a hard path. And a lot of people aren't willing to do the hard stuff to get to the next level, you know, and, and that's the. The sad part about it sometimes is like people, they want it 
kind of like this box truck thing. This is what I've noticed about the box truck world. Um, a lot of people talk it in the comments, that is. I want to do it, but then they're hesitant to pull the trigger because of what somebody else said in the comments. Um, which can be a good a good thing because you know you got to uh, weigh your options, good and bad, when you're uh, doing something like buying a thirty thousand dollar commercial vehicle and got to spend eight to ten thousand dollars to get it up and running and hit the road, and then there possibly might not be any work for you because you're a new carrier and Amazon rates suck, so you can't really do that. <laughs> but um, you got to continue on your path regardless of what sacrifices you got to make. And that's where what separates a lot of people, the sacrifices that they're willing to make. Um, but at the same time, in the, in the near future, I want to get, I want to get to the point to where I can talk about some of the um, great jobs out there. Cause not everybody's built for this entrepreneur stuff. This is a hard road. Like right now, um, I got a check coming from Amazon this week. But after that, I don't know where my next check is coming from. Um, I don't know how much it's going to be. I'm like, OK, that in itself can be a nerve wracking experience to certain people, to most people. I would say to most people, if you don't know where your money's coming from, I got a ton of bills due, not due right now, but that will be due each and every month. So, um in the grand scheme of things, what is your plan? You know, how do you get to the next step? A lot of people have a, a, a problem trying to transition that. So this entrepreneur thing, everybody's not built for because it's stressful. It can be stressful, but it's also a lot more rewarding in my book to go down that path than to be on a job path. But a job path can be very rewarding to the right person. So like the HVAC field, uh, the trades and things like that, IT can be very high paying jobs. It's just what people are willing to do or how long they're willing to do it, to learn it, to get into it and all of that good stuff to become um, more than sufficient at it to, to make a more than decent earning. Um, so my 2022 plans as of right now is to keep leapfrogging wherever I got to go and whatever I got to do. I personally don't plan on hopping back into a job. That's just not my thing. I said at the end of 2020, I would not be coming back and I don't plan on going back. I got a lot of skills. Y'all see it. I got a ton of skills. So the last thing I want to do is hop back into a job. Not to say that I would never hop back into a job, but just as the way things sit right now, I probably wouldn't. I probably wouldn't hop back into a job just because I know I just have to go advertise my skills somewhere. But, I, you know, I'm not going to say I'll never say never, but <clears throat> if I can control it, I wouldn't hop back into a job. But my 2022, I wanted to just progress from this 2021. A lot of people had a bad 2020. And it got even worse in 2021, and it might even be worse for them in 2022. But for me, I had a, a decent 2020. It was fine. I was growing like normal. My 2021 has been pretty decent. It's been okay. And I plan to keep on advancing that. And that's what happens when you make a plan. You got got the you know your five-year plan and you're progressing towards things. That's what uh that's the whole purpose of what I'm trying to do. So Stick to the plan, basically. Lay out the plan, stick to the plan. You know, that's what you got to do. I don't plan on being on here for too long. I should have came on earlier. I know it's late. Nobody's even in here. <laughs> but you guys will see it later. Somebody will see it later. That's fine. When it comes to <clears throat> this YouTube thing, this is another aspect of what I'm trying to do. Um, I like to personally inspire people. Um, I like to push them to be 
I would I would even say in uncomfortable positions because that's where you find uh, greatness when things get uncomfortable. So I like to push people into uncomfortable positions and hopefully they can see what I see in them. Now, that, that's a slippery slope because I don't, you know, you don't want to push people into positions that they literally can't handle. And then, you know, then they're blaming you for their downfall, I would say, or, you know, whatever is negative that happens to them. So um, that's why mentoring is, is such a big deal to me. But with my YouTube channel, I want to be able to showcase and give people the information and knowledge that they need to possibly, possibly jump out into that next um, position, if you will, or venture. Because some people, they just need to push. And <laughs> my wife said, like, since we've been married, I've only had a couple jobs, but <laughs> she, she noticed a pattern in me is when I go to a job, I usually... I'm friendly. I'm very friendly. So I usually uh, acquire a couple friends there. And then within a couple months, I'm usually telling them, you need to quit this job. <laughs> and the reason being is because it's like, they don't appreciate you. You're doing so good. Go to that company. They'll appreciate you more. Um, <laughs> and every company I do that, I find somebody and it's like, hey, man, listen, you're a great guy. Or, or gal, you are a great person. You are a hard worker, and they are just not seeing it, man. So I, I found this position for you. I'm just laying it out there. You don't have to take it, but I'm just laying it out there. You might want to look into it, you know, because uh, I, I like to motivate people. That's one of my, I don't know, all-time goals, lifelong goals. I don't know. It's just something that I do. I, I can see the... Uh, the extra energy that somebody has to give and bring it out of them. The last company I was at, um, there was a guy, he was there for five years. The last HVAC company I was at, he was at that company for five years. And I told him, you are a master at this. Why are you here? And uh, within two or three months, he got, he opened his eyes and started looking around and he was like, yeah, man, this is uh, they're really using me here. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm, no, they're supposed to use you because you work for them. You're, you're being used. But the compensation isn't there. Their compensation package for the value that you bring to this company versus the other employees there, including myself. You are so much more valuable than us. So why aren't they acknowledging that? And I understand why they don't, which is a. Um, I don't know. It's a stupid thing in itself how employers don't acknowledge their employees that literally um, keep parts of the company running. I don't know. It's just our our system here. We just don't reward that type of hard work, even though those same people can see that workers are getting more uh, crybabyish, <laughs> more um, sensitive. They don't work as hard. So the ones that do work as hard, you should be saying, you, I'm going to keep you and I'm going to reward you. But that doesn't happen. So it ends up being, um, oh, we can do this without you. And it's like, what kind of stance is that? Why would you take that type of stance? You don't say we can do it without you. You say we want you here and you make a great part of our team, you would think. But um, so he ended up leaving. And man, their 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 uh, installs because he he did a lot of sales on the install part of the HVAC company, and they they tanked. They didn't fold because HVAC is hard to fold in HVAC. But I can tell you, they're not doing half as much business as they were. Based on their name and their history, they still get business, but they probably lost thirty forty grand a, a month based off of his. No, probably more than that, because he was doing upwards of 20, 15 to 20 sales a month. Uh, upwards of eight to ten thousand dollars an install. So, yeah, that's that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money lost because you don't want to acknowledge a person is bringing you 
great funds and, and you don't want to acknowledge that you appreciate them for what they do. But uh, that's the world we live in right now. You know, it's it's really weird. It's really weird. Maybe that's what I needed to do today. I just needed to talk. <laughs> My wife is, uh, she got to get up in the morning. So she uh, uh, had to go to bed. And the kids, they don't go to school tomorrow. So they don't want to talk. My son just wants to ask, ask me questions, science questions all day. And I answer them, but, or riddles. He like He's in the riddles right now. And the riddles are half baked, so I don't understand them. But <laughs> that's not fun all day. But yeah. Um, to the new subscribers, appreciate appreciate you for subscribing to my channel. Um, if you've made it this far, which I I mean, this is just a little boring monologue, I guess I call it. Um, if you made it this far, though, what my channel is about is business. Doesn't matter what type. I'm currently in the box truck business just early this year. I was in the lunch truck business. Uh, I've been in the carpet cleaning business, the detailing business, um, the HVAC business. I've, I've done a lot of things. I've done a ton of things. So to all the new subscribers that uh, subscribe to my channel, I am about growth. Uh, whatever we got to do to get there, not whatever we got to do, but w whatever we got to do morally to get there uh, and help each other because, and that's one of the, the big aspects of my channel is my knowledge and the, the knowledge of the people around me is valuable. Valuable in the sense that I'm not trying to charge it, charge people for it, but I want to get it out there because somebody could use it to get themselves to the next level. And if you even if you get there before me, I'm 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 a, a cheerleader for you. Um, so my channel, that's what my channel is based on. That's what it's about. I uh, appreciate you for subscribing. Anybody that's new for subscribing. Um, and I got a lot of ideas that I got coming. Um, it's not just about the box truck world for me. And for a lot of the YouTubers, it's not just about box trucks. Oops. They do a lot of things. But me in particular, I got. A lot of projects that I have in the works. I don't even know how I'm going to do them, but over the course of the next five years, well, well, no, that'd be three years. Over the course of the next three years before my 2025 plan ends, um, I got a lot of stuff I, I want to try and do on this channel. I don't know if it'll land, but you know, I'm gonna fly it. <laughs> that's the best, that's about the best I can do for it is just try. Um, Yeah, I think uh, I think I'm gonna put out a video saying that I'm gonna go live this Friday. I like this setup. I need to uh, do this again. I actually got to order another cord because my camera failed, so I can get better picture. I like my picture, but I, it was more crisp with that other cord. So I gotta improve my setup here a little bit because I want to be a little bit more professional, you know. As part of my setup, I want to be able to um, give high quality video. And like I said, I want I want people to be able to come in and chat. I don't want to just uh, sit here and talk to myself and read comments. So if, if you see the link uh, that's pinned at the top and you want to click on it and come in and chat, feel free. Anybody that uh, sees this video while it's live, Next time I go live, I'll be doing the same thing. If you see the link and you want to come and chat, you want to come in and chat, you don't got to be on camera. When you uh, go on your phone, when you go on your cell phone, it'll give you the option to turn your camera off if you don't want to show your face. But you can come in and chat with the audio if you like. Um, we can talk about whatever. I'm bored. We can just chitty chat, uh, talk about current events, box trucks. Plans for 2022, because you know that thing is right around the corner. It's right around the corner, so. Let me change this. Yeah, that's the way I like it. So. Um, next. Uh, 
I think next year is going to be a good year, though. I think I'm trying to make it a breakthrough year. I have several ideas and things that I'm working on. Um, I even got other channels that I'm work currently working on. Um, crypto, I think it's going to be a breakthrough year for crypto. If my crypto portfolio blows, oh, I'm about to become a full-on production studio over here. But uh, I guess I won't uh, kill this stream too much. If I had a couple people in here that was chatting, I'd, it'd be a different story. <sighs> been a while since I've been live. Hmm. Oh, PSA. Public service announcement. Okay, if you're in the... Uh, I, I should have put this at the front of the video because I know nobody's going to see this at the back of this video. If you're doing Amazon and you see these, anything under $2 loads, don't take them. Do not take them. You'll be hurting yourself in the long run. There's no way you can think about fuel. Think about the cost of fuel. Fuel is going up and the rates are going down for Amazon, just for Amazon. So if you're doing Amazon and you see these cheap loads, do not take them. I'm talking $1.40, $1.80, $1.90. Don't touch them. Maybe $2 if you're doing like 60 miles. You might possibly can make that work. That's a short run. But they got loads that's a dollar forty for two hundred and forty miles. Like, there's no way you can make that make sense uh, when it comes to the money that you're gonna make. There's no way you can make that make sense uh, unless you. Well, there is one way if you own your truck outright, but they even still, the insurance is gonna kick your butt regardless. So, if you're doing Amazon, don't take the cheap loads. Make them pay because they have the ability to make them come up in price because not only are we driving but remember we got a touch freight and amazon technically does not pay for us touching the freight they're barely paying us right for driving they're not paying for touching the freight so don't take those loads and i hate i should have put this at the front of the video because that's a very important thing but next time i go live i'm gonna, I'm gonna open up with that do not take these crazy cheap rates from amazon because you'll be hurting yourself in the long run and the community so what i do i don't i try not to take anything under two dollars and thirty cent that's that's my bottom basement and even still when you think about the fact that we have to touch everything with amazon load our trucks unload at every destination we are doing it that's still not enough honestly the way amazon pays or the way they should pay we each run should be around four to six hundred dollars bottom end bottom end it should be but it's not so how we bargain or you know make amazon wake up is we do not take these cheap bottom basement uh loads just don't take them don't even touch them like i'm, I'm looking at my recommended loads right now i see what's the what's the mileage on that i see one good load for two dollars and twenty six cent is one hundred and thirteen miles, two hundred fifty five dollars. One good load, and then you see one ninety, one ninety, one sixty, and one sixty. Not even. I'm not touching that. If people miss their loads, I mean, blame Amazon <laughs> because they, they they're trying to get it for as cheap as possible. Which I get, I, I understand that, but at the same time, no, you, we should not be taking those loads. Not when, if you go with any other company, CH, Robinson, TQL, uh, JB Hunt, you go with anybody else, and you're going to make almost triple what Amazon's paying for the same distance. Like, well, you'd probably be driving more than that, but still, you're, you're going to make a lot more money driving with somebody else. And you don't have to touch it. That, I mean, that's the biggest thing. You don't have to touch the freight. So being that you don't got to touch it, there's no way Amazon is giving us a sweet deal at all. So just, if you can, do your best to stay away from those rates because they suck. Um, 
to anybody that sees this video. Like I said before, I appreciate uh, all the subscribers that decided to subscribe to this channel. I got some things in store. I want to get creative. I'm going to start getting creative. I got an idea that I think I'm going to do real soon for a video because um, I want to. I got so many ideas, man. But I'll get there later. So I guess I'll go ahead and end this stream. I guess I just needed to talk, man. I was bored, man. I needed to talk. Probably Friday. No. Yeah, yeah, Friday. Because I got to go out to Charlottesville. Uh, probably Friday, I will be live streaming, streaming again. And hopefully, I'm going to go on the lead attorney this week, too. I'm going to try and get on the lead attorney's uh, YouTube channel. But hopefully I can get um, get my live stream up, up and running again. I had some little technical difficulties earlier. And uh, next time, try and come through. I'm going to put it in the description uh, and try and put out, a, I guess, a preview video. I want somebody to come through and, and chitty chat. Don't be afraid. You ain't even got to use your camera. Just uh, It's like a phone call. Just be like a phone call. So I guess I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.